But if you were watching the RNC convention and you're a Democrat, you have to be devastated by what you by what you saw. I mean, Kai Trump, first off, they have done such a great job. I have to give I have to give the RNC credit. They've done a great job of humanizing uh, former President Trump. And again, I, you know, I stated this last night, I believe on on the show, but also when I was in uh, last night after uh, on on SNC Salem News Channel. Uh, with Ken Rosado later that evening, uh, or later last night, I, the the RNC is doing a fabulous job of humanizing Donald Trump, and it's one of the things that the left cannot afford. That's why people like Joy Reid are going crazy, uh, co- totally conspiracy theory, talking about oh, I'm not even sure if Trump was shot. I'm not sure if I believe it. You know all this kind of nonsense. It's all they've got. And it just tells you how nasty these people are that we can have a president, regardless of your party affiliation. Listen, man, I can't stand Joe Biden. I, 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 I can't. I mean, I'm telling you, I cannot stand Joe Biden. I don't want him to die from a from an assassin's bullet. I just don't want that to happen to a United States president, period, point blank. Regardless of. Uh, how I feel about him. He still represents the United States of America, regardless of what I may feel about 2020. He still represents the United States of America right now. And I hate that the world gets to see Joe Biden the way that he is. Uh, but at the same time, Democrats have brought this on themselves. But going back to Kai Trump, if I could, and we'll get to J.D. Vance. And, you know, I, I'll, I'll talk about him. I'll talk about the Gold Star families, uh, the Gold Star families as well. But Kai Trump, just continue to build on what the Republican Party has been doing so effectively. Remember, Melania Trump came out with her memo talking about her husband, talking about her son, Barron. You know, after someone's life is taken, everybody gets a, you know, it's just one of those. Oh, man, let me let me slow my roll. You know what I'm saying? Let me let, let me just, you know, your your view of life just changes in an instant. I was the victim of a couple of crimes when I was younger. And listen, I was doing stupid stuff and it was bound to happen. Uh, but you you start thinking, right? You think about how your life. Well, one time I was really stupid. I was I was so dumb. Uh, but anyway, but it, it, you start thinking about what could have been. Things you want to do differently, things you should have done differently. God forbid if this is your last day on earth, if you're going out like that. Trump was wrestled with that perspective. And now other people are starting to see him, I think, is more human, not just this political machine like Melania Trump wrote about. And then you had the other night, as we spoke about, you had Dr. Ben Carson that came out, talked about his friendship uh, with Donald Trump. You had Sarah Huckabee Sanders and all of the encouraging words that Trump, uh, you know, uh, spoke spoke to her. I forget who the uh, oh Laura Trump uh, talked to, talking about her father in law, humanizing him. Why? And this is very important. This is very important. Not ju- it's not just because the left hates Donald Trump. It is in part people need to know him, but it is part of a political strategy too. Remember, Donald Trump is doing well in the polls, even though the polls are slightly tightening now. This isn't going to be a. I it, it I mean. I'm not sure that it's going to be a runaway election. I pray to God that it is. I pray to God that we win. Uh, but listen, all indications are this is still going to be a tight race. But Donald Trump uh, is the one that has the momentum. But when you look at favorables versus unfavorables, there's still a lot of people that don't like Donald Trump. And MSNBC and people like that are doing their darndest uh, are doing their darndest to try to make him continue to make him look bad, make him look like this evil guy, this racist, this xenophobe and all this kind of stuff. And so you bring a Kai Trump out. She's golfing with her grandpa. And her grandpa is challenging her. You know, he wants to be better than her. She wants to be better than him. But he's encouraging her to be as successful as she can be. He's challenging his granddaughter. He's spending time with his granddaughter. That's the relationship they have. But it seems like that's the norm with Trump and his family members. That's the relationship uh, that he has with so many people. He's not this political figure and just machine that we see all the time. Yes, he's an extremely motivated man, no doubt about it. He wouldn't have he wouldn't be where he was, where he is rather, uh, were it not for that. But he's also human. And I got to tell you, they have done the RNC. And I don't know that. I. 
I'm assuming this is strategic. Maybe it's not, you know, but I, but I assume it is since it is at the RNC convention of just humanizing him. And that is a threat to the left because if people start to like him, not, if they start looking at Trump as a sympathetic figure, oh my goodness, this is a guy that, you know, I hated, I couldn't stand. You, I mean, you heard one of the gold star mothers say that yesterday. I thought he was just this arrogant politician. MSNBC had to pan their camera away. But he called me. He spent six hours with me. Joe Biden never called me. Joe Biden never called me. Joe Biden said in a debate, nobody died under my watch. Gold Star families on the stage. 13, 13 of our servicemen and women dead under Joe Biden's watch. Joe Biden never called. Joe Biden's staff never called. Trump spends six hours with one gold star mom and allows her to just vent and cry. They're doing a great job of humanizing Donald Trump, and that is devastating to the left. That is devastating to the left.